In the last lecture, we learned how to create a custom attribute directive like ng class. Now, in this lecture, we will learn how we can create a custom attribute directive like ng style. Now, why I am covering these topics is because I want you to know how these types of attribute directives can be implemented in Angular. For example, let's say in your project, you have a requirement where you need to implement a custom attribute directive, something like ng class or ng style. So if you know how ng class and ng style directive is implemented, then it will be very helpful for you to implement something like that on your own. And that's the only reason why I want to show you how we can implement a custom ng class or ng style directive so that you can take it as a reference and implement something like this on your own. All right. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and let's try to implement our own custom ng style directive. So currently I am in the app component.html file. There we have this h2 element and this div element. On this div element in the last lecture, we applied our own custom app class directive. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to copy this div from here and I'll paste it down here. And from there, I will remove this app class directive. I don't want to add this app class directive on this div element, but I do want to add this CSS class on that div this app container CSS class. So for that, I will simply use class attribute and to that I'll assign this CSS class. If I save the changes and if we go to the web page, the second div looks something like this. So it has some margin and it has some padding. But apart from that, there is no styling on this div. Okay. Now what I want is I want to set some CSS styles on this div and I want to set those CSS styles dynamically. For that, what I'm going to do is I'll open this app component.ts file and in there we have our app component class. There I'll go ahead and I will create a new property. I'll call it as active. It is going to be of type boolean and I'm going to set it to true initially. Now let's go to app component.html and there what I want is if this active is true, in that case, I want to set a background color for this div let's say green but if this active is false in that case i want to set the background color of this div to red for that we can use ng style directive and since it is an attribute directive we need to wrap it within square brackets like this okay and to this we need to assign an object in that object we specify the css style for example background color and to this we can assign a value for example green okay so if i save the changes and if we go to the web page you will notice that the background color is set to green but here we don't want to set it like this we want to set this background color dynamically based on the value of this active property so i'll copy this active property from here i'll use it here and here i'll say if the active property is true so basically i'm using a ternary operator here so if this active property is true, in that case, we want the background color to be green. Otherwise, we want it to be red. Okay, so based on the value of this active property, the background color will be set either to green or to red. Currently, this active property is set to true. As you can see, so if you go to the web page, the background color should be green. But if I go ahead and if I set this active property to false, in that case, the background color should be red as you can see okay so using ng style directive we can set a css style dynamically now here we are only setting one css style which is this background color but if we want we can also set other css styles for example let's say color so what we want is if this active property is true we want to have the text color as white otherwise text color should be black Okay, so if I save the changes, currently this active is false. So in this case, the background color should be red and the text color should be black. As you can see, but if we go back and if we change it to true. Now the background color should be green and text color should be white. Okay, so this is the use of ng style directive. Now what we want is we want to create our own custom ng style directive for that 
let's first go ahead and let's first create a directive class inside this custom directives folder so for that i already have this terminal open here i will type ng generate command we want to generate a directive and i'm going to call this directive as style so you can see this style directive has been created here now with this style directive there is also a spec.ts file which has been created i'll go ahead and i'll delete this file because for now we are not going to write any unit tests for our directives so we don't need it for now and let's go to this style director.ts file so here you can see we have a class called style directive decorated with add directive decorator and the selector for that is app style and inside this style directive class we also have a constructor now what we want is on whichever html element we will use this app style selector we want to get a reference of that html element that dom element inside this style directives class for that what we can do is here for this constructor we can specify a parameter let's call it element it is going to be of type element ref and in order to use this element ref we need to import it from angular slash co and in front of this i will also use the private keyword so that a private property will be created behind the scenes so in this way on whichever html element we will use this app style selector we are going to get a reference of that html element inside this element parameter in the same way i also want to use a renderer class here inside this style directives class so we want angular to inject an instance of a renderer to class inside this style directive class for that i'm again going to create a parameter i'll call it renderer it is going to be of type renderer2 and in order to use this renderer2 we need to import it from angular slash co and again i'll use a private keyword in front of it so that a private property called renderer will be created behind the scenes and it will be assigned with the value which we are going to receive for this renderer parameter all right now i want to use this style directive on this div element so instead of using this ng style directive i want to use our own custom style directive for that what we need to do is we need to use this selector this app style selector on this div so for now let me remove this ng style directive from here let's use the selector of our style directive here okay now currently this style directive is not going to do anything because if you notice inside this style directive we have not written any logic so if i save the changes if we go to the web page it is not going to do anything as you can see it is not doing anything but what we want is inside this style directive we want to have a property i am going to call this property as maybe style okay and i'll also decorate it with at input decorator so that we can bind it from the host element and in order to use this input decorator we need to import it from angular slash co okay and what we also want is whenever we are going to receive some value for this style property we want to execute some logic for that i'll use a setter on this style property and when we use a setter on a property we can implement that property like a method so in here when we will bind this style property on the host element for example let me go ahead and let me bind this property on this host element so here i have used this app style after that i can use the style property of this app style directive and i can bind it and to this i want to assign an object just like how we assign an object to ng style directive in the same way here also to this style i want to assign an object in that object i want to set the background color okay and i want to set it to let's say red and i want to set the text color and i want to set it to white okay so we are assigning this object to this style property so here for this style property we are going to receive that object now how are we going to receive that object we are going to receive that object as a parameter here so i'm going to call this parameter maybe style or i'll call it as styles and it is going to be of type object okay so inside this styles parameter we are going to receive this object now what do we want to do with that object we basically want to go through each property of that object and we want to set that css style on the host element so for example in this object we have two properties background color and color so we want to set this background color style on this div element on the host element and we also want to set this 
color CSS style on this div element. For that, we need to go through each property of this object and we need to get its value and we need to set that style on the host element. Let's see how we can do that. So again, in here, I'm going to use object.entries and to this object.entries method, we need to pass an object. So here I'm going to pass this styles object and this object.entries, it is going to return us an array. So let me go ahead and let me store that array in a variable and I'll simply call it as style entries. Okay, you can name this variable anything, but I'm just going to call it style entries. Now let me go ahead and let me log this style entries just to show you what it contains. So if I go to the web page, let's open developer console here. You will notice that an array has been logged. This array is returned by this object.entries and that array is stored inside this style entries array and in that array if i expand we have two elements the first element is an array and in that array the first element is the property name which is background color and the second element is the value of that property which in this case is red then in the second array again we have the second property which is color and its value which is white in this way if we have set more css styles using this object we will have that inside an array. So this style entries, it is going to store an array. And in that array, we will have a list of arrays. So what we want is, we want to loop over each element of this array. For that, I'm going to use for off loop. And for each iteration, inside this item, we are going to receive an array. Inside that array, we will have two elements. The first element will be the property name and the second element will be its value. So for example, for the first iteration inside this item variable, we are going to receive an array and in that array, the first element will be background color and the second element will be red. Then for the second iteration, the item array will contain an array. In that array, the first element will be color and the second element will be its value, which is white. All right. So now what we want to do is here we are going to use array destructuring syntax. I'm going to create two variables. I'll call it maybe style value or I'll call it CSS style and value. And to this, I'm going to assign this item array. Okay, let me show you what this CSS style and this value will contain for each iteration. So I'll write console.log statement. We want to log CSS style. And we also want to log this value. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. So for some reason, it is logging zero, the index number and the value is undefined. Let's see why is that. That's because here instead of in, we need to use off. Okay, let's go back and now you will see for each iteration, the item array contains the property name as the first element and its value as the second element. Okay, so now let's go back and let's write the logic to apply that particular CSS style on the host element. Again, I'll comment this console.log statement and let's use the renderer class for that. Let's say this dot renderer dot and since we want to add a CSS style, we are going to use set style method. Now, the first argument of the set style method is the element on which we want to set the CSS style. And as we learned earlier, we are going to receive a reference of the host element on which we have used this selector inside this element parameter. So here we can say this dot element dot native element. So this native element, it is going to store a reference of the host element. In this case, the host element is this div element. So this native element property is going to store a reference of that div element. Then the second argument of the set style is the CSS style, which we want to set. In this case, we want to set the CSS style, which is stored inside this CSS style variable. Okay, so for the frustration, the CSS style is going to store background color. And for the second iteration, the CSS style is going to store color. 
then we need to specify the value for that CSS style and the value we are going to have inside this value variable. Okay, so for the first iteration, this value will be red and for the second iteration, the value will be white. With this, if we save the changes, if we go to the web page, you will notice that the background color is set to red and the text color is white. Okay, so in this way, we have created our own custom ng style directive and we are calling it as app style. Now here, currently, we are setting some hard coded values. But what we want is we want to set the CSS styles dynamically. So let's see using this app style, we are able to set the CSS styles dynamically or not. So again, I'm going to use this property, this active property. And here I'll use that active property and I'll say if the active property is true, then set the background color to green. Okay. And if it is false, then set the background color to red in the same way. Here also I will use that active property. So if the active property is true, that means in that case, the background color will be green. So for that, I want to set the text color to white. Otherwise, if active property is false, in that case, I want to set the text color to black. Okay, let's save the changes. Currently, the value of this active property is true. That means the background color should be green and text color should be white. Let's go back. Let's change it to false. And now the background color should be red and text color should be black. Okay, so our custom app style directive is working as expected. It's working just like ng style directive. The only thing which is pending here is currently if you notice, we have used the app style directive and then we are using the style property of that directive. But instead of binding the style property, we want to bind this app style itself. For that again what we can do is here i can name this style as the selector name i can call it app style or what i can also do is i can specify an alias for that style property and i will call that alias as app style and now we cannot use this style property anymore we will have to use app style because for this style property we have specified the alias as app style okay so here let's go back and let's remove this style property from here and let's go ahead and let's bind this app style let's save the changes let's go to the web page and the style directive should still be working as expected but now we are directly binding the selector of style directive to the typescript expression to this object all right, so in this lecture, we learned how we can implement a custom attribute directive like ng style. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.